I thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, I thought it'd be good to start, um, but how should I start? I said to my wife last night, what, what, how do I start? What should I do? And she says, well, why don't you tell a joke? I'm not very really good at jokes. So um, I thought, well, what, let me give, put, put a picture of my wife up um, because she's been an inspiration to me for many of our years. We have five children. Um, I don't know whether that's a round of applause in itself. <laughs> my oldest is 26 and my youngest is two years and three months. So um, the little one is really helping me to learn what learning is really about. I can actually look back and give some of my ideas to him and see them in practice. Whereas with the first one, it's be careful you don't drop him. You know, be careful what he's doing. Um, now I feel a bit more experienced. Um, anyway, I've been around the world a little bit um, and I work as a consultant for a variety of schools and uh, with the IB, uh, I was the ambassador for Indonesia for some time and I'm completing my uh, doctorate on something that sounds grand, but it's not really. It's leadership and values within complexity. And if anyone wants to talk at length about that, then I'll be more than happy in the meantime. So today I'd just like to give a, a few thoughts. We haven't got long, but I really will probably whiz through and normally I'll give you a flavor of what I do in an hour, hour and a half in 20 minutes. And yeah, I mean, any of those things, I think I mean, one of the ones that comes along often is that leadership's a very careful process along a very slippery path. Um, and if we take the old Chinese um, leader, cross the river by feeling for the stones. You don't really know. Deng Xiaoping was a very famous uh, thinker. I w I'd like to start by suggesting, and I hope I'm a little bit controversial with some of you, because if I don't awaken and your ire, at least, then I've not been doing my job here as a keynote speaker. Leadership, I think we can sum up quite simply. We only have to look at the uh, seminal work by Katz and Kahn, suggesting that it's influencing others. But influencing others in a way that advances a group, not an individual. It advances a group towards its goals. Now, we know there's a huge amount of research, and I won't go through it, that says that in the classroom, the teacher has the largest impact on student outcomes. Just look at Professor Hattie uh, from Australia, uh, and you'll see at Adelaide University, his, his research is amazing. But the one that's often forgotten, and I think that sometimes is more important, is that school leadership is the second. It has the second most significant outcome on student outcomes. Now I'm looking at outcomes. And it's that balance, I think, as a leader with the learning and the teaching. And I would suggest to you that without the right leadership, the classrooms are not going to buzz in the way that you want them to. The things that you want to be happening are not going to happen. And so my number one takeaway is that as a leader, your job is learning. It's about learning. Yes, you create the ideal environment. And I know that many of us get dragged away into the CEO type situation. Um, and I've tried to avoid that myself um, because you as the leader at, of your schools, you are the center of establishing the learning pedagogy. That's your number one role. You're the articulator the mentor, and you're the role model. Now, as leaders, often we're creating new paradigms. When you perhaps get into a situation, maybe a new school, as you see on the left there, I would suggest there's, there's a lot of individual um, concerns, all of contextual differences. Some of them overlap, very few do. You have lots of different people aiming in different directions. That's often the context of change, even if you've been there for a while. As a leader, you blend it together, the collaboration, the listening, the reflection, perhaps futures thinking, and you, you create that new paradigm. But it's something that needs to evolve. It's not something that's forced. And it's something where you need to be adapting continually. And I think it's beautiful from the lady we had earlier, that word connectedness is what her education life was about. 
it should be grounded in people. We only need to look at the McKinsey report, which did an amazing amount of research into what makes schools good. Um, the McKinsey uh, report, you can go and look at it yourself. Um, they looked at a variety of things. And the one I want to focus very much on is the middle one there. What interventions do leaders make in all of the top schools? And they looked at top schools all over the world, including India, to see what characteristics there are. And I learned a lot from this report. They pulled out six key interventions as leaders that you should make with learning to progress. First of all, technical skill building. Building the technical skills, obviously, of your teachers, but also yourself. I've never learned so much than in my last 15 years. I really haven't. And that's because I've got some fantastic young people coming into the profession who are teaching me new things. The second thing is student assessment. Too often, principals, I believe, leave it to the heads below them to look at the assessment. This is followed up by um, two rather good um, speakers uh, Kalnin and Richards at a heads conference in The Hague a few years ago and they said quite simply look leadership it's a very very complex thing and they took time to talk through all about the variety of leadership theories and you, you know them we've had the heroic leader who takes the staff jumps over the ramparts and follow me and everything that that vision that mantra of a, a heroic leader is not supported by research any longer. Schools don't work like that. We have leaders <coughs> and theories that suggest the behavioural, where leaders just concern themselves with um, the task ahead and they are more participatory. The contingency, where you deal with situations they can, transformational, which many people like to think they are. But recent research is suggesting that the most effective leaders are the ones that tie themselves to student outcomes, not what we've seen before. So transformational versus instruction. Which one do you think has the most impact? Which one do you think has the most effect on schools' abilities? And I focus again on the first one, integrating pedagogical knowledge. How many of us here know and are role models for the latest learning theories in the classroom? Do we know what they are? This links very much to a style of leadership that Fullan's made popular um, about called collaborative leadership. And he talks of a school as being a collaborative culture where it improves the pedagogy if it's linked to measurable impacts of student learning. So collaboration is not just having a wonderful feeling in the school, but it's got to be focused. Fullan goes on to say that school leaders have the strongest measured impact on the student learning, lead the learning, and they lead the development of teachers whilst they learn alongside them. In a sense, it's the genuine drive to develop a mastery in a leading pedagogy and deep learning alongside teachers. That's what makes us impactful as leaders. To summarize Fullan, a collective collaborative capacity is what's needed in schools. And it's a collaboration and it's a leadership trait that's built around a learning pedagogy. So, I'm saying that learning is at the heart of leadership. You us as leaders bring that experience, the ability to collaborate and creatively solve problems that arise. So in conclusion, I would say to you that leadership today fosters a very dynamic school culture that's centered around inclusive learning communities. Leadership must create the learning experiences of the highest quality. But in an ever-changing situation of complexity, leaders need to acknowledge that we are less and less influential in what's actually happening in our schools. So we might ask ourselves, are we making, are, will we be redundant in the future anyway? 
And finally, good leaders learn and they lead learning. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for listening. Good luck in your leadership.